All right, something a bit different, folks. Uh, kind of done one before, kind of getting this one wrong. But this will be an unboxing video. I have actually already unboxed it, as you can see. Uh, but it's kind of relevant to the cooking and whatnot that I do on this channel and a bit of tech, uh, testing in general. So this, ordered a while ago and waited for. I uh, cheaped out, of course. I got myself the Mars Hydro TS600. It's the smallest, cheapest LED light grow panel. Uh, comes with that user menu we just saw. These things I'm pretty excited about. I'd pay the 80 bucks just to get a good set of these. Uh, Being a doodlers, so you can raise and lower it. Um, I don't even know what they're called. You get the idea. Now this one is full of weed themed stickers which is actually pretty cool. There's some interesting looking stickers. They're clearly catering to their common demographic. Yeah. And one big old sheet of stickers. That's cool. I'll stick them somewhere. I'll, I'll give them to the mate. Yeah, all right, I was just making sure that there's nothing else in there that was important. So they have different models. I got the AC model. Uh, and also disclaimer, use these for what's legal in your area. Uh, growing weed isn't legal here. I'm not using it for growing weed. I'm using it for growing chilies, as I've mentioned before. I grow a lot of chili sauces now. It's just coming into winter here. Um, we have some. We've had some odd seasons recently, but I've, my goal is to start my new chili plants. Probably about thirty or forty of them growing in July, August, when winter's kind of at its peak. And I'll use this to raise them indoors. I've got a little uh, dog mat as well, so. This sits up, the dog mat sits under there, and the chili plants are growing on top of that. So they're at 25 to 28 degrees and adequate light. So this is actually a pretty neat design. Uh, nice SMD. It's got a conformed coating on it, feels like silicon. Uh, they've got little doobie wackies on around the screws so they're not scratching it. You see a variety of different LEDs here. Uh, you've got your two different coolnesses. Now these are going to be probably IR and UV, and they aim to go full spectrum. Now, oh, that was a terrible sound. It says 94 volts dash zero there. I don't know if that's zero up to 94, uh, but we're gonna figure that one out a bit because I've got some ideas for this. But yeah, this is about 95 bucks with free shipping on eBay. Uh, you can buy it from their website or eBay. I found they've got three or four listings on eBay, all with different prices. I found the cheapest listing with free freight and I got it, I think it was maybe 119 with shipping from their website otherwise. Now, I'll plug this into the, um, yeah, and that's working. The smart meter so we can test it out. But all in all, it's, it is a pretty basic design. It's um, a bit of a strange material, but it looks like it'd do the trick. It is fanless, so it's nice and quiet. And the specs here say TS600, AC220 to 240 volt, 50, 60 hertz. It says that it'll draw 95 watt. We're gonna test that out, as Project Farm says, or what is it? Uh, we're te we'll test that. And it says the PPE is 2.3 micro, micro moles per joule. Don't really have a way to test that, but we'll, we'll get some stats from it. So first and foremost, let's plug it in and turn it on. I'm probably gonna blind myself with this, so I'll chuck my sunnies on just in case, and then if it actually helps, I'll chuck my sunnies in front of the camera and see what that does. Uh, don't know how to use cable ties. There we go. All right, one sec, let's go around and plug that in. <clears throat> And then we'll do some less safe science. All right, sunglasses. These aren't gonna make much of a difference. This is gonna suck. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you can tell. Um, for me, without sunnies, I can barely look at this thing. With sunnies, I can just look at it. We can see we've got our, our warm and our cool. We've got our, what's gonna be infrared. I can't see any UV on this, geez, I can't even look at that for too long. It's it's bright as all hell. Uh, the camera, what I can see of the camera feed over there, just does not give this justice. But by the way, you can see it's illuminating my hand, uh, or I guess illuminating anything under it. Gives you a bit of an idea. Well, that camera actually adjusts pretty quick. Um, but I cannot look at this with the bare eye. And with the sunnies, it still hurts. Now, <clears throat> This thing shows it drawing 94.1 watts. So, I give them credit. That's <laughs> no. That's actually very accurate. 94.1 watts. 
Um, I'm I'm impressed that it lived up to spec so far. Not too hot. Ah, oh, that's a sticky layer along there, so that might build up dust. But that's probably probably a pretty good idea um, to hold everything together uniformly. So let's turn it back on. <coughs> Just shady. Oh, Jesus, that's bright. Sort of heat we're getting. Uh, I'm really struggling to see that. 20, 28, 29 degrees maybe. More towards the LEDs. It's either 20 or 28. I mean, I think I'm giving myself permanent eye damage trying to read this. About 30 degrees. So there's a lot of LEDs. They say it's 600 watts equivalent for anyone that's into the growing specs, uh, but it only draws 94 watts because of the LED efficiency. So I think that's pretty good. It is radiating a bit of heat. I can definitely feel some on it. Um, yeah, this is now something about 34 degrees. Let's have a look at this little Lux meter that I've got. Now this, this thing is pretty good. It's a little Dr. Meter LX1330B. It doesn't compare to an actual quantum par meter, uh, but I think it gives pretty bloody good approximation. So if we turn this off, Oh my God, that's good. I can actually see again. When I blink, I can see this thing. I could probably draw it schematics and engineering diagrams just by closing my eyelids and looking at the impression on them. All right, so this is showing, uh, just looking straight up at this light over me, 800, 900 lux. So even with the reflection off the surrounds, that pretty much doubles straight away. That's going to, a, sorry, you can't quite see it from there. Um, it's going to about, 1500-ish lux straight away. 1400, 1500 lux. Now what I want to see is, if we go six inches from this CCFL that I've got up here, which is a 28 watt CCFL, so six inches in front of that. So to the power of 10, it's upside down. It's giving me at six inches or approximately like one hand span, that's 600 lux. So now, I put this this way, right about the same distance. Just give me 026 there, turn it on. Oh, all right, so that's already maxed out. So that's giving us something like, gone to the times 100. That's a ridiculous amount of light. I don't even know how to measure that. Um, times 10. All right, so it's giving us about 80,000, where the previous was giving us about 400, I think. So that's, moving it back up here, I think about 70. Yeah, so it's, it's about 10 times powerful, but all we've gone is from 28 watts to 90 watts. So three times the power, 10 times the light, which is pretty good. Um, I really do need to get a quantum power meter. I think this thing just doesn't quite cut it, but for your basics, for I'm um, just seeing how bright something is, so I was looking at going, yep, that's bright as balls. Does the job. It's been running a little bit. Let's just see if temperature's changed much at all. 38 degrees, all right. So it does vary a little bit, but, oh, do not touch that. You'll get a hell of a shock. Uh, oh, Jesus, that hurt. All right, so some of those components aren't covered in the conformant coating and I just got a hell of a, I've actually burnt my finger. I can smell burnt skin right now. I got a hell of an electric shock from that. So the other thing I was wanting to look at, I'm less inclined to, just gonna take this paneling off and use the multimeter to see what voltage is going into it. Um, I have unplugged it now though, for safety. And we'll see, you can, see if we can have a look at what's actually going on in here. All right, so you've got a pretty straightforward transformer, AC to DC. Might actually test this out. And you can see the earth wire is going straight into that screw there, which is bolted through to the chassis. So that proves I wasn't touching anything because if I touch whatever I touch there, which looks like either a resistor or a capacitor, and been touching the chassis, it would have triggered the RCD. 
but the conformant coating, conformal, conformant, conformal coating definitely doesn't cover everything. Those pads look quite good to get to though. You can see there must be a, a rec big rectifier here, some smoothing capacitors, but it's a pretty straightforward, good assembly. So let's double check what sort of voltage it's getting because I feel uh, comfortable testing that now that I can see what it looks like. Yeah, there she goes. Can you see that? Maybe. Oh, actually. Yeah, you can see that. And then we've got a positive and a negative. Negative. A negative. Mm -hmm. There. So we'll see if we can actually get a read on them. I'm well aware those capacitors might hold a bit of charge. They have covered this in a bit of glue. So I'll give them credit there. This will probably take a fair bit of humidity. I'll um I'll get back onto these this with the hot glue gun once I'm done with my testing and just seal these spots back up again. Because I will be using it in a humid environment. Whew. Now that looks like 32 volts. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, one of my goals is to actually use this virtual sun. <laughs> I can see it again when I blink. To use this virtual sun uh, off grid almost. So I've got a shed set up and I actually want to start growing these in my shed. I've got old UPS batteries that I can get up to about 40 volts or 48 volts ideally. If I can run this straight off that, in fact, I've got a 36 volt inverter that it means I don't have to use any grid power. I've got some old solar panels up on the roof of that shed. They feed the old UPS batteries. And if I put some wizardry in place, I'll probably rip this out. But for now, that's it. That's the site unboxing, testing, and model execution. Um, learn from me. Don't do what I did. Don't touch it while it's active to get its temperature. If you're going to, do it somewhere safe. Even No, just don't do it. It's dumb. I'm dumb. Seems like a good product though, so I'll give it a good test out. A bit disappointed it didn't seem to have any ultraviolet. Um, for chilies, not so much. Chilies don't really need ultraviolet, but my understanding is if you were gonna grow weed with this, you want ultraviolet because that triggers the THC. I think, I could be wrong, all you potheads can correct me, but I think ultraviolet triggers the THC release, which is the oil which kind of protects the plant, and that's the stuff that you wanna be putting in your. But for chilies, this will do the trick. So, Comment if you want to see anything else or have any questions about this product. Uh, hit the subscribe button to see more of all sorts of random crap that I post on here. And like the video, whether you like it or not, just do it because it helps me a bit. And if you don't like it, if you need to hit the dislike button, just make sure you hit it twice. Cheers guys, till next time, take it easy.